what are the most important things you took away from those comments and your conversation with Mark Emmert in general? Well, two points. The first in regards to the delayed start. The more people in positions of power like Emmert who speak that publicly, the more likely it seems it's going to actually happen and the season gets pushed back. The second point would be what he said in reaction to the Marlins. It's what you do when you get those positive tests. And he told me that as of right now, he thinks it should be an individual campus testing program. I know conferences are trying to do better than the NCAA recommended 72-hour window testing before competition. But Greeny, I'm being told it's difficult for some schools right now to get those test results back within a 72-hour window. So testing continues to be one of the focal points for conferences. And because it varies so much from state to state and county to county, it can still be an issue as campuses return with 30 to 40, 50,000 students joining those football players. No, no question about it. Paul, so you hear Emmert there suggesting that a delayed start might make sense. What makes sense to you? Uh, Mark Emmert is making sense, and I think the, world, the end of the world is upon us because I find myself agreeing with what he, he told Heather yesterday. But interestingly, as he is telling Heather that, as he is saying, listen, we need more data. We need to see what the NFL is going to do. We need to see what happens when students get on campus. His organization is also greenlighting schools like, like Oklahoma and Kansas to play a week earlier. So there's so much contradiction here. If you're going to play a week earlier, what good does that do other than it gives you an advantage in the event that you have an outbreak. So it, there is so many mixed messages, which brings us back to the original point that we've been having for months. Nobody is in charge. Mark Emmert uh, has the title, but he's just offering advice. That's it right now. That's correct. There is no obligation on the part of, candidly, almost anyone to follow what it is that he's suggesting. And Tim Hasselbeck, you brought up an interesting thought in our meeting this morning. On, on a day where, we, yesterday, where we saw so many NFL players opting out of the season, many of them leaving a lot of money on the table. What thought did you have as, mm -hmm. as regards college football? Well, seeing that and, and knowing that, you know, the NFL has done a pretty good job because they've had to negotiate with the NFLPA in terms of making the environment for NFL players safe. Think about if you're a college player where, you know, there isn't, there hasn't been that negotiation. There hasn't been an advocate for you doing that. And so now just put yourself in the position of being a 19-year-old college football player that's got to walk into a coach's office and say, hey, you know what, coach? I just don't feel safe. I, I'm not at high risk. I just I don't feel safe doing that. And what type of reaction you think you might get? Sure, there might be some coaches that are understanding and they'll put their arm around you. But there will be plenty of other coaches that would really start to put pressure on that that you know, that young player. And so I think when you look at that, this is a really, I, I feel, kind of a dangerous situation uh, and probably scary situation to be in if you are a young college football player that isn't really sure about playing. Heather, what are you hearing about that side of this? Well, no athlete scholarship is going to be in jeopardy if they don't want to play. Let's start there. But that could create a backlog, right? What I'm, what I'm hearing is that student athletes want to play. I think that, that that's very important. And I think that's one of the reasons that you're seeing a decrease in positive tests around campuses. It's because they get the message. The student athletes are trying what they, what they can do to follow those CDC guidelines and the athletic guidelines on campus. But you know what? I'm also told there's nothing a coach can do in terms of when, when an athlete says, you know, I don't want to go to practice because I'm afraid of the coronavirus. How do you know that they're saying that and they just don't want to go to practice at 6 a.m.? So there's also that issue as well. What do you think, Paul? Well, let me hear from Paul. I'll quickly uh, get Paul. Most of, the, most of the coaches are impervious to, to this virus. And I know that sounds crass, but their job is to win college football games. And, I, and on campuses where you've had outbreaks of 35 or 40 or 50, uh, positive testing. The coaches are saying we have to play. Uh, none of these programs uh, with those outbreaks have been shut down, Greeny. So I, I don't think college football head coaches uh, are really paying much attention to what their players are saying. They may have to at some point, but not yet. Tim, I got, I got 15 seconds for a quick final thought. Go ahead. Well, listen, look, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you're not going to lose your scholarship, but like life can be made miserable. I mean, we've seen it before with other players that, that maybe, you know, haven't seen eye to eye with a head coach. So I think there's that aspect of it. And yeah, I think the vast majority of players are going to want to play, much like the NFL. I think the vast majority players of NFL players are going to want to play. 
But that doesn't mean there isn't you know, more than you would think that are uncomfortable with it, especially players that are looking at it and going, wait, I, I might be done with football in a year or two years from now. I have no NFL aspirations. Like, I'm not playing at Clemson. I'm playing at Wake Forest. Like, you have a different feeling about it, uh, you know, if, if that's your situation. Might be. I have to leave it there for the moment, guys. Outstanding. This continues to be probably the most interesting um, of all of the different subsets of, of the reaction to coronavirus in sports. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.